Hello and welcome back to another video on the channel. I'm Dan Cable Guy. Thanks for joining me. So today I'm going to do an updated video on how to put on a full Stormtrooper costume with a few tips and tricks along the way. I hope you enjoy the video. If you do, please feel free to drop a like and subscribe and any questions do pop them in the comments. So first up, you're going to need a black undersuit. Some people go one piece, some go two. For me, I find it more comfortable with a two piece. So this is bottoms and top. Make sure it's quite well fitted so it doesn't look loose under the armor. So as I say, a black undersuit with no visible logos outside of the armor pieces. Next up, you want to make sure that all of your pieces for your kit are easily accessible, ideally around waist height so you can reach everything. Not on the floor, you'll, that'll make sense soon. You don't want any pieces on the floor. So I've got my armor pieces here, my accessories here, and in my flight box over here, my main battle box, I've got the torso part or the clamshell, as some people call it. So first thing we're going to do is put on the legs. That'll be the thighs and the shins and the boots. That will give us good flexibility so we can still put on the main armour parts in a moment. So let's start with that. You will need as well a simple black belt to go around your waist to hold the thighs in place. Let's get on to that now. Depending on how you've built your armour, you're likely to have this sort of hoop of elastic on the thighs and that's where your belt will go through. Right, the armour should be fitted to your body size, so there shouldn't be too much gap. You don't want a huge amount of gap around the knees here, you don't want it to be too wide. Same at the top, you want to be able to sort of put your fingers in, but you don't want massive space, so you want it to be quite slim line to the body. Right, next up we're going to go with the boots. You have to do the boots before the shins, because the shins actually sit over the boots. So let's try, this is always a bit of a juggle. got a shoehorn maybe that's worth a try I've never been that clever to actually buy one right there we go so we've got thighs and boots. Now on the front of my boots, I will put some pictures separately, I have velcro tabs on the front of both boots and on the back of the boots I have elastic tabs with poppers. Now inside the shins I have the reverse of that. Let me grab the shins now. So this for example, the, the shin with the sniper knee is the left, that's the left hand side, and I have in here a Velcro tab, let's see if I can get that on camera. You can see just inside there, that is a black tab of Velcro. And at the back, I've then got a popper, which you can see inside. There is a popper there which will attach to the back of my boots. Right, so the front now will be attached to the Velcro. And then the back here, I'll just grab the popper on the back tab of the boot and click it on. That's for two reasons. It should stop it twisting around a bit too much. You don't want it to twist round. And it should also stop the shins from raising up or rising up. There we go. We're starting to get something, something now. We're looking a bit like a stormtrooper. Other shin, the right shin, doesn't have the sniper knee plate, and again I've got the same in here. I've got a popper at the back and Velcro at the front. Right. 
Right, next up we need some more of our accessories. So now we've got the legs on, I'm gonna go for the neck seal, the balaclava, and the speaker system. So let's put that on now. So you've got the headset up here of course. I use my speaker system, which in this case is Tramp, but it could be one of many. I just hang this round my neck on the lanyard, and this then of course will sit behind my chest armour. So I find that really good. It gives a nice sound, and it's just out the way. Don't forget to set the volume on this before you put your chest armour on, because it's going to be hard to reach otherwise. Now for the best look when you're out in front of the public, uh, a balaclava is ideal in my opinion because it helps to obscure the human within. So let's try and put the balaclava on. There we go. I always seem to make that a lot more difficult than it should be, but we now have the balaclava on. So of course it's covering your ears, your neck, areas like that. So if a child looks up from down below, they see inside the Stormtrooper helmet, they won't see a neck and facial hair and ears and things like that. Um, so that's that. And then of course you've got a neck seal. I believe the originals were a zip or a zipper, just like this. But a lot of people do use Velcro as well. And my preference is for it to be done up at the back because that's just like the movies. But again, each to their own. took me ages so if you're in a group a costuming group of some sort maybe you'll have another trooper that might be able to just look go around the back and do that up for you or maybe you have crew or spotters that might also be able to do it as well that's always worth a try if you need that assistance so now we've got our legs and our boots we've got our soft parts as they call it which is obviously our black undersuit our neck seal and our balaclava so next we're ready for the torso so let's grab out the torso from the main kit box. Right, so for my armour, I have mine in the clamshell, which is basically all as one piece. So it means I don't have to mess about when I get to a troop by doing loads of fittings inside. It's basically ready to go. Now this one is using the original methods, which has all of the brackets rather than Velcro, but again that's each to their own and all of the fixings are connected with elastic. Elastic for me is crucial so that your armour has flex, so it's not putting too much stress on all the different parts. So let's get into the suit from here. With the original method, only one side of it will actually open, that's this side. The other side in there is attached permanently with split rivets, so this side is the one that opens and you basically climb in to the armour. stage don't forget to adjust the volume of your speaker because once you've put the armor on it's going to be difficult to get inside the armor so I'll turn that up a little bit here testing testing one two there we go the American accent comes out every time I put the suit on Now, in the background, I'm just tucking my neck seal into the back of the armour because you don't want that flapping around. Now, if you've gone for quite a high accurate armour suit, uh, like a build, then you'll have a white elastic strap here. That, that's where the shoulder bridge goes through, the bit that's in my hand. This part with the ridges that I'm attaching now it's called the shoulder bridge. There we go. Not easy, as you can see. Again, if you've got helpers or another trooper, they might be able to just do that for you. But I've now put the shoulder bridge through the elastic strap, and I'll now 
attach the suit together with the popper. So that is now in place in theory. Obviously I can't see it. I'm going on good judgment that it's in the right place. Now I do still have access to my voice system. One, two, one, two. And you can hear that still picks up quite nicely even from within the suit. So that is a good way to do it. Around the side of your armour you'll have more connections. There we go. So that's now done up with a popper as well. Let me try and keep my headset out of the way. So that is now done up with a popper. So the side is connected. So now you've got your torso and your legs on. So of course you're looking pretty stormtroopery. Uh, next up is going to be your waist belt. So your main belt round here. And then also your thermal detonator, which is the little tube that sits on the back. So let's get into that. So I've now got my main belt, my main waist belt which is a plastic bit on top, which I, most of us think is supposed to be ammo packs. It's all hypothetical. And then the drop boxes are the bits that hang down. They should line up roughly with the edges, the ends here, of the plastic armor. And then they should just sort of sit just below the main plastic belt. They shouldn't be dangling too far down. And then you've got your leather or faux leather holster as well. So the holster, a lot of people do this, that they, they have poppers. So I can just connect mine here. There we go, so my holster is now attached. Now there are also, inside here, additional poppers which go onto the armor. There's little poppers on the armor here. Let's move the belt out of the way. There's one here, and there's one over this side, and that just allows us to clip this onto the armor, and then we can tighten it up round the back. There you go, that's one. And the belt should, according to what we see on screen for 99.9% .9 of shots you'll see, the main belt sits just below, sort of touching, sitting on actually, the main ab buttons here, which is these ones. And around the back you'll have Velcro. straight if you can but you know worst case you might again have to get somebody else to help you this is the thermal detonator which as I say is basically the tube that goes on the back of the belt it has metal clips which are about an inch wide approximately and with me I've put some velcro the soft side of velcro on the back so it doesn't do too much damage to the armor it's under the canvas belt anyway but just quite a nice touch There we go, so you try and level that up in the back, you should be able to feel that there are these notches on the butt plate and also on the kidney and that's where you can line that up to. But again, if you've got a helper or a spotter, just see if they can line that up for you. So there we go, we've now got the main waist belt on as well. Let's move on to the arms. Right, here we are, so I've got the arms, obviously left arm and right arm, and we're gonna put these on now. Now, my flexibility has already decreased so the ability to actually move has already dropped dramatically so getting both of these on again can be a bit tricky there's an elastic strap at the top here with another popper and that's going to go on to the under here basically there's another popper on the elastics that go over your shoulder so getting those on can always be a bit fun but let's give it a go and um, with me I'll show you here I've gone for the original method which is actually having these elastics. These are about, if I remember correctly, 50 mil. So about um, two and a bit inches across the elastic and it is glued into both parts, just like the original. So there's no Velcro in here or anything like that. It's just glued straight in. And just to stop the biceps from dropping too far, I've actually got some white elastic in there. 
which again is just to try and keep it a bit neater. The white elastic is not screen accurate, everything else that you see here is just like the originals. Uh, with me as well, I'm part of the UK garrison and this is the little logo we have. That just makes it safer when we're out on a troop in large groups because then we can be spotted easily by our crew. They know which ones are us, so it keeps us nice and safe while we're out trooping. Right, so as I say, the elastic strap is here in my hand and that wants to go under the shoulder elastics. And if you're lucky, be a bit of a a bit of a wiggle sometimes this is why some people don't suit up on their own some people only suit up with other troopers so they can get some assistance but you know it is what it is so that's one arm the second arm gets a lot more difficult because you've now got limited movement because it's obviously harder to move all the parts but let's give it a go Right, it's quite easy to get it to here. Doing the elastic is another one. So we've now got basically most of our suit on. The next thing is gonna be for me, cotton undergloves to go under the rubber gloves. So let's grab these from here. This now explains why you don't want things too low down because it's very difficult to bend. So if I had things on the floor or still in my little troop box over there, I would be in big trouble now because I wouldn't be able to reach anything. And trust me, I have done that before, that's how I know. So for me, I wear these little cotton undergloves, nothing fancy, but obviously these, because they're cotton, can go through the wash. Whereas, screen accurate gloves would be rubber basically like cleaning gloves for the kitchen. So that's why I wear the little cotton undergloves so that you don't get too much sweat into these gloves. So let's get that sorted, but we'll just do the helmet first as well, and then I'll do the gloves. In fact, let's do gloves first. I never know which way to do it. Let's have a look. Right, the gloves are quite long, which is good, just their natural size. So you can then just tuck them into the forearms. There we go. So we're now looking very stormtroopery, just minus the helmet. Uh, for me, I've got this helmet here today. Uh, this one's got a little bit of extras inside. So it's got some fans, slightly different visor to make it a bit better when you're out trooping but I'll just switch on the fans as well so it's not too hot in there. There we go, so this is my trooping helmet. Um, getting the helmet past the headset can be a bit of a kerfuffle sometimes, but let's give that a go. So let's go on with the helmet. Once I do, I always turn American. Let's give it a go. And there we have it, that's a complete guide on dressing as a stormtrooper from bottom to top, right the way from the soft parts through to the hard armour, with a few tips and tricks along the way. If you have any questions about it, do feel free to drop them in the comments or visit my Facebook group. If you've enjoyed the video, please feel free to drop a like and subscribe and I will see you in the next one. Bye bye.
Hello and welcome back to another video on the channel. I'm Dan Cable Guy. Thanks for joining me. So today I'm going to be doing an updated video of how to kit up as cat. <laughs> 